The film opens with a flashback of young Bobby being told the story of an Indian god, Hanuman, by his mother. The scenes are then cut to the present day, in which Bobby is ring fighting while wearing an ape mask. Bobby purposefully loses the match and goes to the bathroom, where the handler, Tiger, gives him half of his cut. Bobby begs Tiger to give him the cut that was promised, but he tells him to become more entertaining first. Disappointed, Bobby goes into a bar where he bribes a little kid named Lucky in exchange for the whereabouts of a woman named Queenie. The next morning, a wheelchair-bound beggar shows up, bothering Queenie during her coffee time. The beggar creates a diversion and steals Queenie's purse. After fleeing, he hands the purse to another begging woman, from whom the purse is almost passed on to everyone present in the slum area before going into Bobby's hands. He takes the purse back to Queenie, who runs a diner up front and supplies girls to the elites in the back. At Queenie's office, Bobby comes across a framed photo of Queenie with Chief Rana, which ignites a past trauma in Bobby. Queenie pays him some money as a basic courtesy and asks him to leave, but Bobby insists that she give him any kind of job at her diner. She laughs it off and tells him to leave since he doesn't fit her standards. But when Bobby shows her his burned hands and claims to do any kind of job that others are not willing to do, Queenie hires him as a kitchen janitor. That night, Bobby is seen resting among a dozen roommates in his slum room when he gets a flashback of his mother teaching him a prayer. It turns into a nightmare when everything around him catches fire. The next day, at his job, Bobby is approached by Alfonso, who claims to be a guy from Quality Control. Alfonso tries to bother Bobby, but the manager tells Alfonso not to bother his staff. Bobby laps into his work and later goes to a local payan shop. He bribes the shopkeeper with some money in order to come in contact with an arms dealer, from whom he buys a revolver. The next day at work, Bobby eavesdrops on Queenie, scolding one of her trafficked girls, Sita. Queenie spots Bobby looking at them, so she invites him into her office and tells him to face the wall while she discusses her deal with Alfonso, a middleman between her and Nakib, the actual girl supplier. Queenie throws some cash at Alfonso and tells him to get the best girls for the parties, since her VIP client, Rana, attends them. When Alfonso leaves, Bobby goes after him and begs him to give Bobby some work. Alfonso wants Bobby off his tail, but Bobby offers him a deal that's hard to resist. Bobby tells Alfonso to bet on a ring fighter named Khan, who is guaranteed to win because Bobby will be fighting him and the match is rigged. Alfonso accepts this deal and shows up at the fight club. When Khan wins the match, he becomes happy and appoints Bobby as his right hand. Alfonso takes Bobby to his first party, at which he is to serve guests alcohol. Alfonso keeps revealing the dark sides of their society's elite people, which leads Bobby to ask about Rana. Alfonso reveals that he's one of the filthiest junkies, who can be found in the VIP lounge on the top floor, puffing coke and banging chicks. After the party, Alfonso gives Bobby a lift in his auto rickshaw. In the next party thrown by Queenie, Bobby serves wine to an elite who is drooling all over Sita. There, Bobby comes across a recurring past traumatic event in which Chief Rana is watching Bobby's village burn to ashes. He becomes so suffocated that he runs out of the party. In the back alley, he comes across a dog, whom he feeds some leftovers picked up from the trash. Sita joins him in the alley for a smoke and tells him not to work in environments that trigger his traumas. Before leaving, she tells him not to feed the dog, as it will keep coming back expecting more food. Up next is a time lapse of Bobby's daily activities. Fighting in the ring, working in the kitchen, feeding and training the dog, and shooting at random posters to perfect his aim. Days after working with Alfonso, he is finally taken to the VIP room. Before that, he is put through a security check, which he clears. He then goes into the back alley and whistles at his dog, which brings him his gun. He hides the gun in his coat and goes to the VIP floor to serve the elites some substances. His eyes pop out of his socket when he watches Sita entertain Chief Rana. He runs into the bathroom to deal with the haunting memories. He puts himself together and goes to serve Rana the drugs. Rana trails the substance on Sita's naked thigh and puffs it, only to find his nose bleeding. He goes to the bathroom to clean it, where Bobby goes after him, locks the doors, and points a gun at him. He gets distracted by a man walking out of the bathroom stall, which allows Rana to overpower him and throw away the gun. 
He spars with Rana and gets brutally injured in the attempts to get back his gun. In the middle of their fight, Rana mistakenly shoots the third man. Havoc is wreaked when everyone hears the gunshot. Alfonso, along with many others, takes the elevator and flees. When Rana's men try to break open the locked doors, Bobby breaks the giant aquarium above the injured Rana and flees. He tries to break out of a window but fails. Hence, he ends up facing a few of Rana's men on his way out. He steals Alfonso's auto rickshaw, tells him to get in, and speeds away. On the road, they are chased down by the police in their cars, bikes, and helicopters. The chase ends when Bobby stops the auto in order to save a little girl coming in his way. A police van strikes the auto from behind, causing it to trip and roll down the road. Alfonso apologizes to Bobby and runs away. A policeman shows up and knocks the injured Bobby out with a hockey stick. Bobby regains consciousness inside the police van and uses their guns to shoot them. He breaks out of the police van and ends up in a brothel, whose owner shows up with an axe to hit Bobby for leading the cops to his place. Bobby bites the brothel owner twice in attempts to get away, but when the cops show up, he runs to the rooftop and starts jumping onto the next rooftops to escape. Sadly, he gets shot and falls into the river. We are once again shown a flashback of young Bobby strolling in the woods with his mother, who is teaching him about tree roots. He regains consciousness once again and finds a group of trans people taking out the bullet from his body and sealing the punctured skin with a burning iron rod. Bobby tries leaving the trans people's temple, but their alpha suggests doing the opposite since the cops are vigorously looking for him everywhere. Meanwhile, a very sinister Baba named Shakti, who holds great influence, is approached by Rana. Rana tells him of Bobby's attack, so Shakti tells him to get rid of him before he does something bigger. On the other hand, Alfonso goes into hiding after watching him as a wanted man on the news alongside Bobby. Back in the temple, Alpha becomes Bobby's spirit guide after finding out he is haunted by his past. He makes him inhale a toxin extracted from a tree, which makes Bobby's heart open just like the Indian god Hanuman in the story his mother told him. The journey takes him to a final flashback in which we are shown young Bobby enjoying a puppet show of Hanuman with his mother. Rana shows up with the officers, gets blessings from Shakti over the phone, and starts firing at the villagers. While the cops set the village on fire, Bobby's mother takes him to their house and hides him in the attic. Rana shows up, forces himself onto the mother, and sets her corpse on fire once she dies of his torments. Bobby catches a glimpse of Rana's name tag and his ring with teary eyes. Once he leaves, Bobby comes down and tries to extinguish his burning mother's corpse with his bare hands, which burn badly. In the present, Bobby rids himself of the painful memories and starts practicing fight moves on a hanging sack. Alpha proudly watches him practice his moves. As the days go by, Bobby starts teaching his moves to other trans people as well. One day, Bobby attends Baba Shakti's speech ceremony, in which he introduces another corrupt politician to his disciples with Rana by his side. Back in the temple, Shakti's men beat down one of the trans people for putting up their posters on the wall, claiming trans people don't have the right. When Bobby witnesses this, he decides to go back to the ring fight and win. He takes out his savings and gives them to a kid to put them on a bet in favor of Bobby. Alfonso also takes a seat in the crowd and watches Bobby knock out two of the most powerful opponents, which makes Tiger angry. The crowd soon starts chanting Bobby's name, Monkey Man. Bobby's bet money gets doubled after winning, so he anonymously donates it to the trans people to hire security for them. Now Baba Shakti makes a jaw-dropping appearance in Queenie's lounge to promote the corrupt politician. As the politician makes his speech, Bobby infiltrates from the back and his trans people from the parking lot. Bobby goes into the kitchen and beats up a bunch of security guards, showing no mercy. Before leaving, he sets a gas cylinder on fire. He takes the elevator, where he obliterates two bodyguards using sharp knives. When the elevator doors open in the lounge, Bobby shoots fireworks in Rana's direction. His officers immediately escort Shakti to the top floor while the guests run out. Bobby single-handedly takes down dozens of security guards in the lounge. When more guards come down through the elevator, Alpha and his team barge in to give Bobby a hand. As the two sides battle, Queenie comes down with a gun and starts shooting at Bobby. He hides behind a desk and dodges the bullets. 
Luckily, Sita shows up, bashing Queenie's head with a tray from behind. Bobby uses that tray to chop off Queenie's thumb and goes to the VIP lounge to end Rana. Rana strikes him from behind and says provocative things to him. This time, Bobby not only stands against his strikes, but he beats him to death. He then goes upstairs to face Baba, who tangles Bobby in a religious discussion. He slowly comes near Bobby, telling him the history of his shoes. He then takes out sharp nails from the shoes and jabs one in Bobby's stomach and the other in his hand that's trying to defend the attack. Shakti's helicopter shows up to take him away, but Bobby shows great courage by taking out the nails from his body and stabbing Shakti to death with those nails. The film ends with Bobby lying back and hearing his childhood self praying to God. Hope you liked the story recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.